come once again to discuss things. This is I, the one, the only. Welcome to another episode of Geeky Gentlemen. I'm Super 2. Joining me today is... Alfie, a geek for fun. Indeed. And today we're here to discuss everybody's favorite purple m- genocidal monster, Thanos. Yay. <laughs> the mad titan himself, here to wipe out 50% of our subscriber count. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, Thanos is one of those guys who just... Again, I've always been more of a DC guy, so I haven't read a bunch of the Marvel stuff. And just, I don't know. I, it is, it's probably a really gatekeepy attitude or some shit, but... I always just looked over and, and I saw Thanos and I'm like, oh, so the dark side ripoff. Um, yeah, I, I've I've been the same. Like I saw someone once put it. Maybe this is gonna get people off on the wrong foot, but I think this is too good of a quote not to share. I saw someone once put it as like... Uh, if Darkseid is the schoolyard bully of like the DC Comics universe, is Thanos is the kid who like Darkseid like uh, swirlies? <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's that's an interesting way to look at it. But I mean, they are very similar in um, I don't know if purpose is the right word in function to their respective universes. They both have their own like their own agenda that's that's pretty distinct in its own evil way but they're they both serve like a very particular purpose uh in in their respective universes of of kind of being that big threat that unites everyone against them yada yada Mm -hmm. and for marvel that's something that um because like cosmic marvel is a lot bigger than cosmic dc it's a lot more expansive which is like compared to how the, the typical view of like marvel's more street level dc's more out there you wouldn't expect that but like marvel cosmic is like completely flashed out and like different hierarchies all completely thing they always turn up for events and stuff whereas dc cosmic is like dc tends to go through phases of being embarrassed to use it a lot of the time mm-hmm. um, because of that stigma like it has as being the out there company um so Thanos being in that has probably had more like because the problem with dark side as much as we love him is like so many people don't get dark side and they kind of just turn him into thanos where he's yes. just the guy that just the sleek fights um but because thanos actually is that guy he gets a lot more um quality stories represent his character properly which then dark side does who has few, uh, very few but really, like, these are seminal stories, whereas a lot of majority, especially modern comics, is he's the Thanos ripoff, even though he came first. And, like, it's a it's a confusing back-and-forth relationship, which I think is interesting. Yeah, yeah, I think, like... I think the way to put it is Darkseid created the mold and Marvel knew how to market it better. Yeah. Yeah, um... And, and so... It's it's hard for me as as more of a DC guy to approach Thanos and not kind of see that and and not like him. But at the same time, when you watch the MCU stuff that's been done with him and and you you kind of see that bleed over into other media, it's hard not to be like, okay, yeah, this is a fully distinct character at this point. He's got his own motivations and everything, and at this point, we're just kind of going forward with its own thing. Like, so, yeah, the dark side ripoff is there, but, I mean, I like Plastic Man, and he's, I'm pretty sure he's a Mr. Fantastic ripoff, if I'm remembering <laughs> the order of those characters correctly. Am I? Yeah. I, oh, I, I believe so, because, I mean, I, I don't remember Plastic Man existing before the Silver Age. Yeah. Yeah, so, I don't know, that's just kind of where I, I come to Thanos with a... A very different set of circumstances and it's, it's kind of funny because like apocalypse became the ripoff thanos and it just <laughs> stayed in marvel um so that that's a whole thing and a half <laughs> um 
But I don't know. Let's let's get more into just Thanos himself proper. Um, where's where's your take on the character? What's what's your your view of of this is Thanos, this is not? All right. So I do want to kind of split us into comic Thanos and then movie Thanos because I feel uh, unlike a lot of comic characters um, compared to the movies, is Thanos has a, such a pop culture impact since he's come into the films and because he's presented as this big overarching villain of this film saga whereas in the comics he's like he's a bad guy for like an event or two and then moved on um i, I feel like it have very two distinct characters but also marvel movie Thanos is probably bigger in terms of people understanding him just in terms of reach than comic Thanos will ever be which i think is an interesting touch um but just comic Thanos, i've never really dug I like Infinity Gauntlet. I like a lot of the stories with him. I like Thanos Quest. I like his Silver Surfer stuff. I like every time he pops up because of the, his effect on other characters. Not really the biggest fan on him himself. I feel like the idea of a guy who just in, in completely in love with the physical embodiment of death and she's not into him is very interesting. But I'm also like, I don't know. It just feels so on the nose. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing, and that's kind of like why I really enjoyed what they they ended up doing, creating a rivalry between Deadpool and Thanos. Yeah, where like but... Dead Deadpool's the guy Death's actually into, and Thanos is like, I mean, the the joke is is too obvious not to just go for it. Thanos is like a fucking cuck. <laughs> um, <laughs> the Chad Deadpool. Yeah, to Chad Deadpool. I mean, it's just there. You can't. You can't not see it, um, and that's like kind of funny that they they've kind of done that, and and like it it almost makes Thanos just a little bit more off in the comics. That like he's in love with death. It sounds so deep and edgy, and then you find out death isn't even into him. And it's like oh, so like not only is he crazy, but he's crazy in like an incomprehensible cosmic scale which kind of works even better like if if we went with the original thing of oh thanos is in love with death and he wants to appease death that's one thing but then you add to the fact that death doesn't even care nor appreciate his advances um and that creates like a, a different side to the dynamic too and you realize that the love of death is just an excuse yeah, and there's this really great scene like with that in like Thanos is the kind of guy who no matter how much he rises or how many times he just triumphs over heroes and achieves his goals through all these incredible means, be it his great power or his intellect, uh, he's also like the most incompetent <laughs> fucker in the entire world because he has one very specific goal and he just doesn't get it. Um, there's this great scene in Infinity Gauntlet where he gets all the stones uh but beforehand like he's like to death is like i will you you will only talk to me if i'm your equal so i will get the all the stones and become a god and become your equal i'll become equal to death and then we can be together so he gets all the infinity stones and this whole time she's only talking for, to him through her like servant so when he gets the gauntlet and he's like death my love i've done this and he speaks to her she still won't speak to him and then he's like why why have you done this you lied to me uh, and then her like servant comes through and he says, yes, Thanos, you are right. She would spoke to you if you became her equal. However, you are now above her in the higher cosmic hierarchy and it would be unfit for her to, to talk to someone as majestic as you. And he just fucking kills the guy and walks off in a tantrum. <laughs> <laughs> I like, first of all, I really like the fact that you can kill Death's servant. I, yeah. I, I very much appreciate that. Um, so yeah, this is like the stuff where I, I hear it about Marvel Comics. It really makes me want to read Marvel Comics, but I know if I did, I, I didn't, wouldn't enjoy it for one reason or another. Um, but no, that's that's it. Like, he is just like constantly... Uh, it, there's a book that's out... I either just finished or maybe it's still ongoing but Thanos wins and the whole premise of that was meant to be like okay Thanos gets everything he wants and I'm like I'm, I'm entirely uninterested in the premise because Thanos exists 
to create the ultimate hurdle for the heroes of the Marvel Universe. If he gets, like, the win, then it doesn't... It doesn't feel like they're... They're, um... Accomplishing anything. It feels like they're just kind of sweeping up... I'm, I'm fucking up this train of thought. If Thanos wins, just unequivocally, there's no way for anyone else to do anything about it. I just, I don't really know what, what good that does or, or what the interest is there. Because Thanos winning, like, I don't want to see that guy happy. I'm more interested, like you said earlier, about his effect on the other characters. Yeah, definitely. Um, he's he's not a character like... Again, this is like... We bring this up a lot where we've been kind of saying, okay, he's like Dark Souls, but he's like the final boss of the Marvel Universe. And comic-wise, I in vehemently disagree that Thanos... And I hate that he's, because of the success of the movie, he's trying to be positioned as. Like, Marvel's really trying ever since recently. just like, okay, Thanos is the big bad. And while he can be for certain stories, I think universe-wise and history-wise, the big bad of the Marvel Universe is Doctor Doom. Um, he's an infinitely greater character. And the good thing with Doctor Doom as well, which Thanos doesn't have, is when Doctor Doom wins, he's still just as interesting because his endgame goal doesn't necessarily have to be bad. Whereas mm-hmm. Thanos, no matter if he... And then you can explore some moral questions of like, well, shit, could, should we let this guy win? <laughs> Whereas with Thanos, he's... His endgame goal is so petty and so... But on it's like pettiness on the grandest cosmic scale. And he's just so unredeemable and he has no good qualities about him. He's just an edgy teenager in the body of like a... Uh, he's, like a he's like a guy who listens to like... Um, like emo goth songs 24 7 but he has like the power of a god which is funny but it's also like you can take him seriously as a threat but at the same time you're not really supposed to see him as oh this guy has a point yeah and like that's the the interesting thing that the mcu decided to do with him is is try to make an argument for why you need to wipe out half of all life in the universe like, okay, you, and, and that's the thing, is like, the, you had all the, the fucking bros after Infinity War come out and say, oh, you know, Thanos actually had a point, resources are limited, and then anyone with, like, half a, a sense of sense w- was saying, well, first of all, no, they're not, and second of all, even if they were, why wouldn't you just use the gauntlet to create more resources <laughs> um like it's just it's a really weird thing to try to give him a motivation that makes sense because you're trying to make genocide make sense and you know the interesting thing they did with movie thanos is try to make it as dispassionate as possible and so you have this guy who is completely irrational and truly crazy but is 1000 percent convinced of his bullshit and is and and has the means and the will to act on it and that's the side of the character that i found really interesting in the movie not that he has a point because truly he doesn't it's that he thinks he has a point and no one can convince him otherwise yeah, it's very much the like you remind me of like all all the people who were like, oh, the Joker's the protagonist of the Dark Knight. He, the Joker's right. Like that that kind of lane of thought came out, which I always think is it's the moment Dubro starts saying that, that means you've got a good villain because it means anyone who doesn't have this like the sense of moral stability or like just basic like understanding of morality and everything, if they can buy it that this is a reasonable ethic, then it means you've doing something right with your villain because you've at least made it believable that some person would agree with this Mm -hmm. Uh, and i think Thanos has that where he he's he's convinced himself that he's right and he's so unstoppable and he's so intelligent and he's so driven that no one can effectively form a counter argument that can convince him it's not even like he's deluded himself he's just such a force of nature that anyone who's trying to tell him you're crazy he's like okay prove me wrong he beats the shit out of him he's like well obviously you didn't prove me wrong kind of thing (laughs) yeah yeah that's the thing is like there's 
if you have a fucking army and you're you're just rampaging, committing genocide throughout the galaxy, who's going to be able to prove you wrong? You know, it's just it. That's the side of the the character that I found really really interesting. Um. Okay, so <sighs> we both just saw Endgame. Um, this is being recorded Saturday, the twenty seventh. Um. I'm really debating how much to talk about the MCU version of the character in there because I don't think he changes at all. He just comes to a different revelation and I'm trying to decide whether or not we can talk about it without just going straight spoilers. Uh, I think if you just if we just make this the part because I think we have gonna do a bit about Thanos. I think again, our both our exposure to comic Thanos is about as limited as what we talked about it. If if people want to listen to this part and got a good gauge and want to wait for the rest of the video until after Endgame, because when this is posted, it will be a little bit of time after. And I think most people are gonna see this movie anyway. We're not gonna get a chance to talk about this anyway. I think it's a good idea to go for it if this is the cutoff point. Okay, yeah. I mean, they got they got half a podcast, right? All right. Yeah. Okay, so... See, as perfectly balanced as all things should be. Ah! <laughs> okay, we should just end it there, because that was the perfect point. <laughs> um, yeah, all right, all right. So, so from this point on, spoilers beware. Um, okay. You, you've had your time. All right. So the, the realization that Thanos comes to, that he can't just remove half of life he has to just create life that is ignorant and be a god is interesting still don't know what the hell to think of that one yeah i think it's very much from how i interpret again i've only seen the movie once from where i saw him he's kind of just had such a you, you to see his life ambition be complete and then having to deal with the aftermath of like oh i did it but people are still fighting that is such a because he believes it so wholeheartedly that after he won the universe would eventually be grateful and that was like his philosophy it's he's just angry at that point he's just vengeful at that point he's like you you fucking idiots don't you see i just saved you fine it's like he's bitter like that whole final act is just Thanos turning a bit more into comic Thanos where he's no longer apathetic. He's no longer trying to do it from his own misguided morals. He's just salty. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I really did like that side of the, the character turn. And and more so, I liked that um, that he, he was kind of just losing the ambition. It's not that, like he didn't see that it, it didn't work or anything like that. It's just that he, he realized, okay, no one's going to be grateful to me, so I'm just going to be a god. I'll just create a new universe. And that's that's the side of things I found interesting. I um, also found it interesting that, like, they're almost kind of there. Um, like Like, people were almost maybe starting to be a little bit grateful uh after they moved on quote unquote um like you got that scene early on in the movie where uh where cap says i saw a whale when i came over the bridge and black widow's like in the hudson he's like yeah fewer ships and i was like oh they're living with this they're kind of getting to the point where they are almost okay with it before you know, the opportunity presents itself. And I thought that was interesting. Yeah, I, I really appreciated the idea of... Um, because it's something that the comics didn't get, because the, after um, you know, Infinity Gauntlet, after the snap happens, we don't get to live with it. It's immediately... Like, the, how M game starts, where they go and fight Thanos, that's just the, the second half of Infinity Gauntlet. It's, it's the big fight, and then they undo it. There's no living with it. And the fact that there is now a five-year gap that is permanent and is not undone, where you can tell stories of, like, okay, people have to accept this, and what does that do to these heroes? How do they live with that? Is really it, it makes Thanos even though he is defeated ultimately and he is proven wrong and he's killed twice <laughs> uh it makes his actions as a final saga villain worth something it is that that is will be history now that is an event that happened 
Yeah, yeah. Again, I always want to take... As much as I'm more of a DC guy, I always want to take a history class in the Marvel Universe more. <laughs> um, because their world reflects ours a little bit better. Uh, and, and so, you know, I always wanted to like the, the Captain America class in, his, in high school history. Always sounded really interesting to me. Um, and then just, yeah, that, that side of things too. The MCU. And now, children, we're going to talk about the Thanos snap event wherein world leaders died but then were brought back five years later so the interesting questions became what about their terms did they truly end um, like that side of things yeah I, the, I, I, it's, find... it's never gonna get brought up but like i would really fucking love if they just decide to get ballsy after Endgame, and we're just like, okay, well, the 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 Winter Soldier Falcon series is now just going to be super political about how does a new Captain America try and re- retain political infrastructure after what just happened. Yeah, yeah, I'm curious what's going to be set during that five years and what's not, because like we're supposed to get a Wanda Vision series, and like Vision didn't look like he was brought back. Um, either that or they forgot to show that scene or I missed him somewhere. Um, that, that whole side of things is going to be interesting to see. Um, hmm. Where else to go with, with MCU Thanos post Endgame? Part of this is just processing a lot of what happened in that movie. Um, did you think his, his character shift made sense in Endgame or did, do you think it kind of came out somewhere just to service the plot a little bit no i think it did because again we're dealing with a younger thanos and he's not had like um apparently the reason why they say oh why he waited so long is the russos were like oh he went on a spiritual journey before he decided to go on on the dota stone so he mentally prepared himself obviously this isn't mentioned in the film so this is obviously they probably should have put this in there but i do like the idea of a guy who is going to prepare himself for this finding out it's still going to be challenged even after he's gone through this he thinks he's going to get a biblical odyssey that will be rewarded he's so deluded in himself that he's literally built followers of his children uh, and he's indoctrinated them to keep telling that him that he's right he mm-hmm. expects the entire universe to be his nebula now he expects the entire universe to be something he can fix and then will obey him unconditionally so then to find out not only will that betray him his nebula will betray him but then to find out that all these earthlings of all people that like stopped his first thing of the avengers are now going to fuck him over i can totally buy that this insane guy will just say you know what forget the pretenses i'm a bloodthirsty murderer i'm going to do this one thing and then i'm going to go back to being apathetic Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah i think that's fair um like that that moment he has with cap where he's like all the worlds i i came to it was never out of anything personal it was never vengeance or anything it was just just passion because I did what I thought needed to be done. But what I'm about to do to your planet, I'm going to enjoy, was just really harsh. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. That that was that was where like the knife really started to get turned, and you you saw that this isn't a dispassionate guy. This guy does have a very um, a very dark, mean side to him that he just pretends isn't there when it's convenient to him yeah i I like him as well um because something that's really interesting about thanos in the mcu which does directly tie to the comics is thanos first appears in an iron man comic of all places that's his debut and in the mcu he really is full-on iron man villain he is Mm. a tony stark like anti hmm what what specifically makes you say that? Because I guess I hadn't really thought of that. So as we see like Tony in the MCU specifically, he's very much, I have an idea, I'm going to stick with it and prove that I'm right. And if anyone else disagrees, there's going to be some kind of conflict. And his character arc is trying to grow over that and trying to m- maybe learn that yes you're really intelligent and you're really driven and you've got a great will, Tony, but at the end of the day, people are people. You can't shepherd them you can't try and do everything for them and when you're gone the world will be fine and that's like his arc over all these films is Thanos is just the opposite of that is his Avengers are all his obedient servants who will do whatever he sells them to do and he any challenges that will be met with death 
and he refuses to uh, to waver in his convictions. Like he's all he is right, and anyone who's wrong is not going to get it. And just like Tony as well is. Like how uh, in Civil War, where like Bucky kills his mum, and he's like, Steve's like, Tony, come on, we can stop this. We don't have to fight each other. He's like, I don't care. He killed my mum. Is Tony also has that? I can just be a petty bastard if I want to. I I don't care. It's that same as Thanos. And I think a lot of that, especially in Infinity War, when they first meet, and uh, Tony's like. You are all I've been thinking. You've been my nightmare. And then Thanos recognizes him specifically. It's only him he recognizes by name. He's like Stark. And he's like, I too have been cursed with knowledge. He's, I think that's a direct parallel between those two, which I find is interesting. Yeah. Yeah. That, that line is still kind of tripping with me because I feel like there was an end game rewrite that didn't really make sense or something. Um, mm-hmm. Like, because I really like that moment in the movie. And it seemed like the most, oh, this will pay off in the next movie. And unless I missed something, it totally doesn't. Um, so that, but I, I get I get what you're saying now. I guess I hadn't really thought about it that way, but that is a really, really good point. Uh, especially with how their, their moments kind of end. I am inevitable. I am Iron Man. You mm-hmm. know, that that is a really, really good parallel right there for MCU Thanos and, and, um, and, uh, MCU Tony. Um, so we've talked a lot about MCU and comic Thanos. Is there any other media that has represented him in a different way or, or well elsewhere outside of the comics? Well, that's the thing. He's never really... After... He was always niche before the Avengers post credit scene. His Thanos was heard about and like used in like versus battle forums and stuff. But he was always like a, a pull he had to pick from. Like Infinity Gauntlet was big, but it wasn't like Civil War, like pop culture big in terms of like casual Marvel fandom. He he always he was always around, but he was never like you had to you had to be a deep Marvel fan. Like the Guardians of the Galaxy, they had to be a BD fan. After he shows up in Avengers um he's everywhere in animation and movies and like not even move like just cartoons um especially all the mcu related like avengers assemble cartoon the lego games all of that suddenly became because normally what would happen is dr doom or galactus is like the the major villain of like a marvel cartoon or something Mm -hmm. whereas suddenly it became thanos the problem is is we kind of the default to comic thanos where but even like the most basic level of that because they don't want to get into the whole death thing because a lot of this is more child friendly aimed as and we just get pretty much mongol where he's just a t- evil tyrant who's strong and punches the bad and he's one of the most uninteresting archetypes for a final boss you could do mm. okay all right um well i guess the only other thing i can talk about with thanos then is um cosmic ghost rider version of thanos uh because that is an alternate timeline that is fucking hilarious and dark and twisted. Um, so uh, Frank Castle uh, is the Punisher, and then he dies and is resurrected as the Ghost Rider Spirit of Vengeance, and then he he becomes the Herald of Galactus, <laughs> and then he, so he's the cosmic herald of Galactus, and then Thanos kills Galactus, and he becomes slave to Th- or Thanos's right hand. Um, so it's this really crazy continuity, and then Thanos dies or kills himself or some shit. It's it's fucking nuts. Um, but then it gets really interesting when Frank's kind of off on his own again and traveling the spaceways, and decides, you know what? No, I'm gonna do something good. I'm gonna go kill baby Thanos. And he tries to, but he, he honestly can't bring himself to do it. And the penance stare doesn't work because baby Thanos hasn't committed any sins yet. Um, and so then he's like, all right, I'm going to raise baby Thanos. <laughs> so he'll be a better person. And then the watcher shows up right there. And he's like, I just came to witness the worst decision anyone has ever made. <laughs> Frank Castle raising Thanos. How can that end well? <laughs> and, and then, like all these fucking cables start showing up for, with all these different um, different superheroes from this alternate timeline that Frank Castle just created. And he's like, Frank, you think he's gonna be better, but he's worse. He's so much worse. 
And then Thanos shows up wearing the Punisher outfit and calls Frank Castle dad. And it's kind of the most ludicrous, insane thing ever because he takes him to his own timeline. And yeah, he's... He's doing the same shit. He's killing millions, but now it's like, oh no, I threw all of the criminals just in a giant pit together. And now they'll all kill themselves and everyone else in the universe will be at peace. And it's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> how, how do you determine someone is a criminal? Well, if they try to kill me, that's usually my go-to. <laughs> it's just... <laughs> It's it's one of the most insane things. It's like a very very different take on Thanos, but kind of goes back to that that root thing of he's always going to be a bad person. He's always got this this thing that's wrong with him, where he's just he'll find excuses to c- commit you know horrific war crimes, and and I just really like that. Mm-hmm. That uh, sounds that, really great. Like I've seen. Like the image of him in the Punisher first, and it's like amazing. Uh, yeah, yeah. There's like a whole bunch of stuff like that with Thanos, which I think, no matter what version of Thanos exists, be it different timelines or whatever, it always seems to be the common denominator is here is a guy who just always misses the point. Mhm. Yeah, that's what I'm tending to notice with him. He just, he's always just kind of gonna fuck shit up. Like that's. That's kind of his destiny, is to just be a, a scourge on the galaxy. And I think that's kind of a a neat distinction from Darkseid, you know? Mm-hmm. Because it's Which not Darkseid's it destiny, works. it's Darkseid's will. For, like, Marvel and DC, if you do want to make them, like, Marvel... DC, Marvel is DC... Uh, Thanos is Marvel's Darkseid. Uh, whereas Marvel is always kind of categorized as all the heroes are fuck-ups, and, but they have to work to be better. So if you want to make like a dark side equivalent in that universe, it would be someone who thinks his goals are as grand as dark side, but completely misses the point of them and fucks up. But in a way he doesn't intend, but it's like almost worse. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think that's a, a good place to, to end this one. Um, Alfie, thanks for doing this. No, it was kind of a impromptu and shit. No, it's always a pleasure. Enjoy this one. All right, cool. Uh, Everyone, thanks very much for watching. Until next time, I'm the Philosopher. And I'm a geek for fun. And we are your geeky gentlemen. And we will be discussing things.